Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Stapleton Roy. I'm the director of the Kissinger Institute on China and the United States here at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. Uh, we're very pleased you could join us this afternoon for the visit by the Minister of Culture of the People's Republic of China, uh, Minister Tsai. Uh, I think many of you may know that the Woodrow Wilson Center is a living memorial to the one U.S. president uh, who actually was a scholar, uh, not, not simply a widely published uh, uh, professor, but the president of a small university in New Jersey that uh, Jim Leach happened to uh, attend, <laughs> as did I. So we are very proud of this con connection. Um, Jim Leach is going to introduce uh, Minister Tsai uh, when he makes his remarks but I have the honor of saying a few words about Mr. Leach, uh, which it's easy to do because he is a very well-known figure here in Washington. He has been chairman of the National Endowment on the Humanities since 2009 when President Obama appointed him to that position. Prior to that, he was a visiting professor at Princeton. He also taught at Harvard. And, of course, he represented the great state of Iowa for 30 years uh, in the House of Representatives, where he rose to be the chairman of the House Banking and Financial Services Committee. He was the chairman of the subcommittee on East Asia and the Pacific. And he also chaired, I believe, what's called the Congressional Executive Commission on China. Uh, so he has many strings to his bow including being a champion wrestler. <laughs> so uh, it's a great honor for me to turn the podium over to Chairman Leach to introduce the minister. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Staple. And you might understand that uh, Ambassador Roy is one of the most distinguished ambassadors of the last generation, uh, perhaps American history. Uh, in a <laughs> world <Short> history, history? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a in a setting uh, in which uh, certainly uh, the most important bilateral relationship of this century and perhaps millennia will probably be between the United States and and China, uh, I'm pleased that. Uh, Minister Tsai Wu has accepted my invitation to give an address in Washington on the substance and direction of Chinese cultural policy. Uh, how cultural uh, interfaces with politics is central to human affairs. Uh, political issues at any moment in time are in many ways of a surface nature in relationship to the underlying culture of peoples. If peoples of one country can respect the culture of another, it is much more likely that any differences that arise can be managed peacefully and constructively. On the other hand, if mutual respect is lacking, the likelihood of less peaceful, less constructive approaches being established is high. A member of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China, uh, Minister Tsai Wu holds a law degree. Uh, before assuming his current position, he held a number of important posts including that of instructor in international politics at Peking University. Uh, this academic background serves him well. Welcome, uh, Minister Tsai. Ambassador uh, Mr. Roy, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure and privilege to introduce the Chinese culture and its influence on China's economy and society, particularly its impact on China's peaceful development. Taking today's opportunity, I also wish to express uh, sincere hope. I hope that cultural exchange between China and the U.S. can bridge the hearts and the minds of our peoples, deepen our mutual understanding and trust. As is said by China's ancient scholar Zheng Zi over 2,000 years ago, virtuous men use culture to make friends. China and U.S. have different, yet both outstanding cultures. We should 
inspire each other, learn from each other, and become candid friends with each other. I think the best way to know a country is to know its culture. Culture represents the, the face and the soul of a nation. The Chinese culture is the only ancient human civilization that has continued without interruption. It is deeply rooted in the land of China and at the same time has absorbed and integrated cultural elements from neighboring countries and beyond. It has a unique tradition of its own. Such tradition is defined by strong resilience, openness, the openness, the strong interest and readiness to absorb other cultures. It reflects the golden mean and temperance and a firm belief in harmony and balance as an antidote to narrow-mindedness and paranoia. This culture is also a compassionate culture centered on humanity and a set of uh, human ethics that ask people to extend one's empathy from self to others, from the near to the far. The Chinese people believe that one should cultivate one's character, build a happy family, love their nation, and care for the whole world. Such moral standards have been upheld in the Chinese culture for thousands of years. This national character has decided that China has a long-standing history of advocating culture rather than relying on force. For centuries, China was a self-sufficient agricultural civilization. Our ancestors were fully devoted to farming on their own land. When their peaceful life was disrupted by the invasion of uh, alien forces, their natural instinct was to retreat in defense. The Great Wall is a living testimony to this tradition. China has never colonized smaller countries, and even at its prime time in the past, seldom did central China launch invasive wars against others. Today, China has always upholds a defensive policy of national security and will never embark on the old path of some countries in seeking hegemony when being strong. In its economic relations with other countries, China always adheres to peace and mutual benefits. It has never resorted to doing business with swords in hand. Over 600 years ago, the great Chinese navigator Zheng He led seven maritime expeditions to as far as Kenya in East Africa. All his voyages were recognized as voyages of peace. All these stories exemplify that the Chinese people is a peaceful, open, and inclusive nation. Today, based on such cultural traditions of harmony, today's China is embarked on the broad road of peaceful development. We recognize that our world today is undergoing major transformations, adjustments, and development. As economic globalization and political multipolarization further deepen, the interactions and interdependence between different countries have become more or increasingly intensive. There is a universal consensus for all nations to seek peace, development, and cooperation. However, some major issues that have great bearing on human subsistence and development are yet to be solved. Regional wars and conflicts keep breaking out. People in some countries and regions are still inflicted by starvation and diseases. Mankind still faces the threat of separatism, terrorism, and proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, as well as cross-border security challenges such as financial crisis, climate change, energy and water shortage, food problems, and public health hazards. In order to overcome such common threats and um, challenges, all countries, nations, and communities must work together closely and pull our efforts together for our common good. It is precisely thanks to such understanding and consciousness that the Chinese people have always been holding high the banner of peace, development, and cooperation. Today's China is encountered with not only common threats and challenges for all mankind, but also with difficulties and problems particular to the underdeveloped countries. As China still remains the largest developing country in the world, there is still a long and arduous way for us to go before we achieve substantial development, modernization, and ensure each and every one of our 1.3 billion people a happy, decent, and well-loved life.
We still need several or even dozens of generations to work hard to this end. We are deeply aware that to realize this future, we must rely on a peaceful, tranquil, and stable international environment. Therefore, China unswervingly upholds its independent foreign policy of peace, working in all efforts to create a peaceful and stable international environment featuring equality, mutual trust, win-win cooperation, exchange and mutual learning. We are also doing our best to shoulder our share of international responsibilities and live up to be a strong foothold for safeguarding regional and world peace. In the last three decades of reform and opening up, the culture of harmony has supported China to, be, to achieve greater progress in economic growth, social stability, and ethnic solidarity, and as well as the great improvement of our people's living standards. When looking at China's progress, many visionary researchers have noticed that the impact of Chinese culture cannot be neglected. When we piece together different dimensions of Chinese culture, we could invariably find a picture of cultural China underneath the more apparent image of economic China. Culture is an important powerhouse and head spring for China's development. In today's China, when China adopts the concept of scientific approach to development, set up its goal of building a harmonious society and uh, uh, reform, reaffirm its determination of further reform and opening up. It is China's cul Chinese culture's commitment to harmony and our people's collective will for peace that are at work. In today's China, there is a fast growth of public need for cultural services and products. Culture is increasingly integrated in other sectors of economy and society. Culture is becoming an ever more important part of social development. The Chinese government attaches high importance to the cultural regeneration of our nation and the cultural well-being of our people. We are working hard to build a nationwide network of public cultural services, boosting our cultural industries, encouraging innovation, promoting cultural diversity, and learning from other cultures extensively. We uphold the principle of let 100 flowers blossom and 100 schools stores contend, and seek to enrich the cultural life of our citizens with high-quality cultural products and services. Culture has long been compared to water in China, which is both gentle and nourishing. It is compared to spring rain at night, quietly nurturing everything from human souls to societies to the whole world. China's road of peaceful development is actually a path towards a harmonious nation inside and a harmonious world outside. It represents our people's sincere wish that all peoples of the world should live in peace, equality, harmony and happiness and enjoy the fruits of peace and development under the same azure sky. China as an ancient civilization has a long tradition of loving culture. As I stand here in China's Minister of Culture today, I'm confident that the Chinese culture will play a greater role in China's own development as well as our future promotion of world peace and development. China is part of the world, and the Chinese culture is also part of the world's cultures. As mankind engage in ever closer interactions, the destiny of humanity is also increasingly tied together. In cultural development, mankind also needs to align our goals and mentalities so as to find solutions to our common challenges. Like in the Chinese proverb today, as I speak here, I'm seeking a soulmate in a foreign land. I really look forward to sincere cultural and intellectual responses from you. China and the United States, as the largest developing country and the largest developed country in the world, both have an important weight on the global economy and the world trade. The significance of our bilateral relations cannot be overestimated. The United States have a very mature cultural market, and China's ancient civilization once had a strong impact on the world. In seeking a model of modern culture suitable to its conditions today, China is looking to experiences from the United States. Of course, China and the U.S. have great differences in culture. But I believe that so long as we adhere to the principle of mutual respect and seeking common ground in differences and continue to deepen our exchange and communication, China and the U.S. will definitely reach more consensus in the future in culture and particularly achieve more mutual understanding on the following concepts. 
first. Culture should lead us to a better future. Culture is the innate driving force for human living and development. It is deeply integrated with economy and politics. It has an increasingly important role and position in comprehensive national competitiveness. In our opinion, differences of cultures and civilizations are not the roots of international conflicts. On the surface, differences in civilizations and ideologies did sometimes trigger conflicts, but a thorough study of the history of mankind tells us that the main source of conflicts does not so much originate from the so-called differences in culture and ideology, but rather from territorial disputes, resources scrambles, economic and trade frictions, as well as shift of profits and losses. Quite contrary, cultural exchange often served as positive catalysts for promotion, promotion of peace and progress, as conflicts could be alleviated through cultural exchange, and contradictions could be resolved through mutual understanding and recognition. Therefore, the future of Sino-U.S. relations should rather be spearheaded by cultural exchange so that our two nations can constantly increase mutual understanding, expand common consensus, and build a beautiful and harmonious future. Second, dialogue should help to increase understanding. As our world enters in the era of economic globalization and digitization, there is all the more urgent need for in-depth communication and understanding. When dealing with other countries, people can become really ill-informed if they are totally ignorant of the history and culture of others, just like blind men feeling just part of an elephant in the famous fable. They could be easily, mis easily misled by misconceptions and prejudices and jump to misjudgments, which could be exaggeration or demonization, which could further lead to irresponsible bad-mouthing or over-flattery. And a fast speed of information transmission, again, often amplifies such misjudgments and deepens the sense of alienation between people creating potential cultural front confrontation or conflicts. From our personal experiences, it is apparent that the impression of the U.S. gained by the Chinese people from watching Hollywood blockbusters and the impression of China gained by Americans from just the media coverage could be stereotyped and incomplete, sometimes even filled with prejudices and misconceptions. To solve this problem, we have to rely on dialogue. Cultural dialogue between China and U.S. should be all-dimensional, multifaceted, and in-depth. We need dialogues not only on the governmental level, but also among the academics. And we need extensive and in-depth exchange of different social groups. It is through dialogue that we could seek common understanding in differences, cultivate a sense of amity between our two peoples, bridge the psychological gap between us, and effectively eliminate prejudices and alienation for better understanding and common ground. Third, cultural competition should move towards peace. No doubt, there will be competitions among different nations, but cultural competition should be peaceful and serve to promote human civilization and help people to share cultural achievements. To meet future challenges in the era of globalization, it is more imperative that we pull together our talents and wisdom make the best of our intelligence and the respective strength of different nations and cultures to realize our shared dream of happy and peaceful life. China is seeking a culture of harmony, not a culture of conflict, violence, or hegemony. We are actively involved in world cultural competition, but also firmly committed to safeguarding long-standing world peace. China's progress and development is in itself part and parcel of the world's progress and development. Professor Joseph Nye, an influential U.S. scholar, recently published an article named Should China Be Contained, which says that Asia revival is a natural and welcome evolution as it, as it enables hundreds of millions of people to escape from poverty. He rejected the ideal of containing China and believed that the visit of Dr. Henry Kissinger to China four decades ago quote, ushered in not only a Cold War transformation, but also a new era of U.S.-Chinese engagement, end quote. He also argues that China's development has given rise to fears that China will become a threat to the U.S., but he feels this fear is, quote, exaggerated, end quote. I agree with him on this conclusion. Furthermore, I believe that, just like Professor Nye, all those who understand Chinese history and Chinese culture, particularly well-accomplished sinologists, have the same belief that China's threat is a fallacy, and politicians who are clear-minded on world politics will never consider containment as a wise choice. 
fourth, cultural diversity in the world should be promoted. The United States have long been viewed as a melting pot or mosaic for diverse cultures and ethnic groups, cultures of Indian, Anglo-Saxon, African, Latino, Chinese, Indian, Arabic origin have um, inter interacted and converged to form the uh, unique and brilliant American culture. The rich diversity and energi energetic creativity of American culture are similar somehow to the Chinese culture. Whenever I come into the United States and stand in the streets of New York watching the bustling crowds and uh, looking at the dazzling advertisements of culture, arts and entertainment, inevitably would I feel the very dynamism of American culture. Such dynamism, I think, comes from the very diversity of culture and the respect and the tolerance for foreign cultures. As a Chinese government administrator for culture, I appreciate such openness. In this time of globalization, our world needs to set up a common consensus of respect and tolerance for different civilizations. We need to build our cultural concepts in compliance with human needs and human morality. We need to foster a social and a cultural environment suited for peaceful development. Of course, we are aware that it is due to the differences in our environment, the phases, conditions, and the path of economic and social development that different countries, regions, and ethnic groups in the world have developed their own cultures with distinctive features. But it is the very rich and diversified cultures that have made our world so colorful. One can hardly imagine such a diversified and complicated, complicated world can be measured with just one single ruler tailored with one pair of scissors or standardized upon one single model. And one can hardly imagine a world to allow just one value system to exist and dispel the others without causing fight. As cultural diversity is the fundamental feature of world civilizations, we have every reason to respect differences and accommodate different cultures just like the vast ocean that is fed by hundreds of rivers. Civilizations and cultures of different nations vary only in their features, but not in classification of being good or bad, high or low, superior or inferior. We all need to learn and appreciate the beauty of other countries and advocate exchanges and mutual learning on the basis of a mutual respect. We need to seek a harmonious and happy future for all mankind, just as Mr. Fei Xiaotong, one of China's most renowned so uh, scholars, once suggested, to appreciate the cultures of others as due to one's own and share our cultures together, the world will become a harmonious one. Fifth, a more sustainable human civilization should be our common goal. One of the perpetual problems facing humanity is how to achieve harmony between man and nature, individual and society, and among people. To find solution to this problem, we should learn from our ancestors, and we need to be innovative. Thus, we should strive for a new eco-friendly civilization. While we seek the harmony of human nature, we must realize that it is the innate desire of humanity to achieve sustainable development. China will work together with all people of the world to safeguard the Earth as our common homeland. This is where our lives depend on. To this end, we are working hard to transform China's economic pattern into an eco-friendly and highly efficient one and advocate lifestyles and productive models that are more eco-friendly so that resources saving and environmental protection can become a common value and spontaneous action of our entire world. And we believe this is also a common aspiration for all nations. Geographically, China and the United States are far apart, but we have a long-standing history of interaction, which is deeply connected with our cultures. As early as 1784, the American merchant vessel Empress of China arrived in Guangzhou, opening a route of commercial and cultural exchange. In 1820, a Chinese named Xie Qinggao published China's very first record of American life record across the sea, portraying his personal impressions of the American life. Not long after, American Protestant missionary Elia Coleman Bridgman published the monthly journal Chinese Repository, 
enabling Westerners to delve more deeply into the cultural treasures of China. Frequent exchanges of culture between China and the U.S. have been going on for more than a century. In January 1979, China and the U.S. established the diplomatic relations and signed cultural agreement afterwards, opening up a new era for Sino-American culture exchange and cooperation. After that, there are increasingly vibrant and in-depth exchanges of all sectors between our two nations, from government to the people and from economy to culture. The cultural exchange between China and the U.S. keeps adding new dimensions to our bilateral relations. It has been proven to be a significant bridge to help promote the mutual understanding and friendship of our two peoples and a bond uh, for a goodwill to each other. Over the years, our two countries have seen fruitful exchange and cooperation in the fields of art, entertainment, library, museum, cultural heritage, publishing, film, and sports. Many American pop singers, uh, uh, Hollywood film stars, uh, and NBA players are household names among the Chinese young people, while millions of Americans are wowed by Chinese celebrities as Yao Ming and uh, Lang Lang. Back in May this year, as the guest of honor country at the Seattle International Children's Festival, China brought many unique productions such as Sichuan Opera and Cantonese Puppet Show. These performances were well received by the local audience, especially children. A joint um, collaboration between the Ministry of Culture of China and the National Endowment for the Humanities have uh, initiated China-U.S. Cultural Forum, starting from 18, uh, 2008, has achieved uh, its objective of bridging cultures of our two countries. Right after this speech today, I'm heading for the J.F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts for the opening concert of the serial events named China, the Art of a Nation. These events uh, is a large-scale showcase of Chinese arts following the media, uh, the Festival of China jointly presented by the Ministry and the Kennedy Center in 2005. The audiences in Washington will appreciate a series of cultural events from China. I, having said all this, I would also like to frankly point out a certain social mentality and cultural phenomenon. At the beginning of China's reform and opening up in early 1980s, the, U the U.S. adopted a policy of active engagement and friendliness towards China, opened its wide uh, gate wide to China, and became a nation that was most talked about and learned from by the Chinese people. Back then, the prevalent sentiments of our two peoples towards each other were friendliness and appreciation. However, after we have entered the 21st century as China moves faster in modernization and gains gradual growth in economy, economy and greater openness, the public opinion changed. There are more nose pointing, nitpicking, and mistrust. And the goodwill our peoples had towards each other seems to have also changed under the influence of the media. This is a scenario that we do not want to see. In this new era, when our bilateral relations are increasingly closer, it is a common concern for our people to further enhance understanding and friendly emotions between different circles of our people and consolidate the foundation of public goodwill for our bilateral relations. More and more people realize that culture as an effective way of connecting the hearts and the minds of our people, that bears more significance. I think strengthening cultural exchange between China and the United States is both timely and arduous. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, China-U.S. high-level consultation on people-to-people -people exchange is an achievement made under the joint auspices of President Hu Jintao and President Obama in the hope of increasing the mutual understanding of our people and expanding the foundation of China-U.S. public friendliness through cultural exchange and cooperation. Chinese State Councilor Liu Yandong and U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton have jointly hosted two rounds of consultation, resulting in a series of great achievements. We will make full use of this mechanism to further lift the standard of Sino-American cultural exchange and cooperation so as to forge more long-term institutionalized cultural cooperation projects. We believe that if, we, if only we make concerted efforts in the spirit of sincerity, candidness, and pragmatism, China and the U.S. will achieve greater progress in the field of cultural exchange and cooperation, harvest 
the bounty fruits and embrace an even more splendid future. That's the end of my lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Leach. Minister Tsai would be happy to take some questions. We have some microphones in the room. I would ask you to use the microphone to identify yourself and please try to keep your questions short so that we can uh, work in as many people uh, as possible. we we'll begin right here. Thank you. My name is Barbara Pillsbury. I'm a cultural anthropologist working in China since 1978. There are very few, cult very few countries in the world which have a ministry of culture, and this is a new creation in China. Minister Tsai Wu, thank you very much for your comments. Can you tell us why was it decided to create a ministry of culture in China, and when, and, excuse me, and what is the mission or the vision or purpose of the, of the ministry? Barbara 建立了中央人民政府，就设立了文化部，所以文化部是中国政府迄今为止最老的一个组织。Ever since the uh, establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949, the Ministry of Culture was already part of the central government of China. So we can say that it's one of the oldest ministries in China. The main responsibility of the Ministry of Culture is to uh, give policies for Chinese culture. This 文化市场的监管、文化产业的振兴、文化遗产的保护、文化立法的创意、文化艺术文化艺术的教育以及文化人才的培养 as the uh, part of the central government uh, administering cultural affairs, uh, the Ministry of Culture of China has uh, several missions. First is to set up the policies uh, guiding the cultural development of China. Uh, the second is to help build the cultural infrastructure across China. Third, uh, uh, we need to put up guidelines for cultural and artistic development in China for in the long term. Long term. Uh, in specifically speaking, there are several functions for the Ministry of Culture. The first thing is to um, provide support and assistance and also guidance to cultural and artistic creations. The second is to provide basic cultural service for the public, that is uh, both mostly for free, libraries, museums and so on. Third is to foster a cultural market in contemporary China. And fourth is to uh, help the Chinese cultural industries to develop uh, the fifth is to protect Chinese cultural heritage. Uh, the next is to uh, further strengthen cultural legislation. And then we also have the responsibility to uh, increase arts education and the training of cultural personnel and professionals. Uh, at the same time, uh, we also need to apply more high technology for cultural development. And the, uh, another major function for the Ministry of Culture is to conduct uh, international cultural exchanges and cooperation. Uh, Yu 
和出版事业不在我们文化部管理下范围，另外有两个机构来管理这些事务。Well,、uh, actually, in China, because we have our、uh, unique system of、uh, cultural administration, we still have other agencies overseeing cultural affairs. For example, we have a state administration of radio, film, and television, overseeing the uh, uh, market of film and the production of films, te TV, and uh, um, uh, cinema development. And we have also another. Department named the State Administration of Press and Pub Publishing.、Uh, that is to say, the press and、uh, publications. So there are different agencies overseeing different parts of culture. We have the Cultural Department, that is, the Cultural Department, twenty-five departments. The Cultural Department is one of them. The Ministry of Culture in China is one of the twenty-five、uh, cabinet ministers. The Ministry of Culture in China is one of the twenty-five cabinet ministers. Yes, we have a question over here. Hello, my name is Mikhail Siyamka. I'm a Canon Institute、uh, student scholar. Mr. Minister, thank you for comment. I have a question. I saw yesterday Martin Luther King Memorial here in the national at the National Mall in D.C. and I would like to know if what was、uh, the role of your ministry、uh, in the creation of、uh, this memorial? Have you played some、uh, role? Have you assisted in this uh, both um, uh, creational and Administrative process. Thank you very much.、Uh, excuse me, the Martin Luther King Memorial.、Uh, could, could this、uh, the person、uh, say a little bit more about that one? What's the name, specific name of the memorial? Oh, good. Ah, good. <笑>啊，这个我到我到我们还不知道这个情况啊，我们和这个事情没有啊，刚刚落成的是吧？我知道这个你刚才说的这个具体的这个纪念馆的落成呢，我们倒是很没有和他呃参与过，没有任何关系。但是我要告诉你，马丁路德金在中国是个非常受人尊敬的这个伟大的一个人物，他的。I have a dream. This speech in Chinese young people has a very wide impact. Um, I I have to admit that、uh, we haven't been informed about the establishment of this、um, uh, memorial for Martin Luther King here, and uh, uh, there seems to be no involvement involvement from our part. But I want to tell you that in China, Martin Luther King enjoys high reputation. In China, his speech "I Have a Dream" is、um, known by every young Chinese in China. 我这个年龄是在上中学的时候、上大学的时候，我们都是读这个他的这个演说。And even for people of my age, during our college years, we all recite his speech. Mr. Minister, perhaps I could ask you a question. <laughs> In recent years, a lot of attention has been paid to the concept of soft power. Of which a nation's culture is an important component. Are you satisfied with the role that China's culture is playing in China's soft power, or do you believe that there are some additional things that should be done to strengthen the cultural aspect of China's soft power? 近年来，关于这个呃软实力的讨论呢，非常的热烈。那么文化呢，被认为是软软实力当中重要的组成部分。请问您对于中国文化在中国软实力当中扮演的角色感到满意吗？呃，您认为我们目前中国还可以另外做一些什么事情来更呃提升我们的文化软实力？刚才我已经讲到，这个中华文明是世界上唯一一个延续了五千年而没有中断过的古老文明。它本身的这个内涵应该说是非常丰富的，但是我这些年在世界各各国的这个旅行呢，也是我发现，外界对于中国，特别是对于中国的文化，还很不了解，或者说了解的还是比较表面的东西。这个不是怪我们的外国朋友们，他们没有很好的学习中国文化，而是怪我们自己对于中国文化本身向外面的推介，我们做的很不好，很不够。
just as I said, China enjoys uh, more than 5,000 years of uninterrupted uh, civilization. We have a profound history of uh, very rich cultural resources and cult cultural development. However, as I traveled uh, across the world in recent years, I have witnessed that uh, in, the, uh, in this world, many people still have very little knowledge about China or only very superficial knowledge about the Chinese culture. I wouldn't blame anybody uh, in the outside world for not knowing the Chinese culture well enough because I think part of the reason is that we, from our part, haven't done enough to promote and present the Chinese culture in the proper way. I think we have uh, three shortcomings in this aspect. The First disadvantage is that due to uh, the different stages of economic development, China used to have uh, inadequate power of communication to the outside world. We didn't have such means as internet or a TV or a very strong TV or broadcasting power to bring our information to the outside world. Secondly, I think many, even professionals in the cultural side, uh, cultural field in China, uh, have a misunderstanding or kind of uh, mis, um, uh, mistaken approach. Uh, we, there were many people who thought that the only things worth introducing to the outside world are ancient achievements, uh, ancient civilization in the last thousands of years. And they neglected what we have achieved in the last 30 years, particularly uh, in modern China and contemporary China. So we didn't have uh, enough uh, coverage about contemporary China in terms of culture. <laughs> 在过去这几十年，特别是近改革开放三十年来，中国在文化的现代化和当代文化的发展的各个领域，应该说都取得了许多啊成绩，呃，有些成绩还是非常突出的，但是外界对我们这方面的发展了解的相当。but actually, in the last uh, several decades, China has uh, achieved a lot of progress in the cultural field. Uh, there are many outstanding artworks that uh, haven't been known by the outside world yet. The third disadvantage lies in the communication skills, uh, which should come from a deep understanding of the differences between the Chinese language, the Chinese uh, mentality, the Chinese ways of thinking, and ways of thinking of other countries. Uh, China still needs to find its way for cross-cultural dialogue and uh, effective uh, cross-cultural communication. I <laughs> example. Uh, in places like Europe or the United States, if you see a, a, a beautiful lady in the street, you could just come up to her and say, you are beautiful, you are gorgeous, and she would just say, thank you. Uh, but if you say the same thing to a Chinese woman in the street or anywhere else, she would definitely be very de defensive and um, um, taking you as uh, having uh, some intentions. <laughs> she would say, what do you mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 我们未来在加强中外的文化交流的时候我们要做三件事第一我们要全面的而不是片面的向世界介绍我们的文化的各个方面 
，包括我们的优秀的传统文化，也包括我们蓬勃发展的当代文化，甚至也包括我们现在在文化发展中间还存在的问题，都应该向世界做解释。So I think in the future, when we do、uh, in intercultural exchange and cooperation, we need to、uh, improve in different fields. First, we need to introduce Chinese culture in a more comprehensive way instead of one-sided way. We should、um, present not only our splendid histories and tradition, but also to present our vibrant contemporary culture. And we need also to introduce Chinese culture not only、uh, in its merits, but also in its shortcomings and、uh, its、uh, re、reality. 第二呢，我们要应该有更多的投投入，来建设我们现代化的文化传播手段，比如说广播、电视、电影、出版，各种各样的运用一切的这个先进的手段来促进投入到文化交流中间来，来提高我们传播的这种硬件的措施。And secondly, we think we need to put more investment for the establishment of communication channels and platforms.、Uh, for example, we need to learn、uh, to use、uh, more TV, radio, broadcasting, film, publication、um, methods to trans transmit the information about Chinese culture. Thirdly, we need to develop more knowledge of Chinese culture, and to understand the Western way of thinking and their habits and their behavior. 我们也希望有更多的呃，这个外国人、外国朋友能够呃，既了解西方的这个文化，又能够掌握呃一些汉语，能够在这个文化交流中间起很好的沟通作用。这样的话，我们就可以克服这个文化差异带来的障碍。Certainly, we definitely need more people.、Uh, we need to train more people and、uh, invite more people to join this effort、uh, to bridge the minds and hearts of Chinese people with other people. We need people to who both understand both Chinese、uh, and the Chinese people's mentality and ways of thinking, and uh, uh, the knowledge、uh, no, got the knowledge of another、uh, foreign country.、Uh, for example, we also need、uh, foreign people like you who are friendly to China, who know Chinese language, who. Know the Chinese people's mentality.、Uh, we hope these people could serve as bridge to bring our people closer to the outside world. 最后呢，我还想强调一点，我们所主张的这个文化交流不是单向的，说只想把我们中国的文化推向世界，不是的。我们同时敞开大门，我们接吸收和借鉴啊，各个国家、各个民族优秀的文化来进入到中国。这种交流、这种借鉴将会促进我们文化的发展。比如说。最近呢，我们就把百老汇的音乐剧，呃，《妈妈咪呀》，呃，中文版引进到中国，演出了几十场，现在非常受欢迎。Uh, and I also want to emphasize that by、uh, cultural exchange, we don't mean to export Chinese culture in a one-way direction, but rather we also open the gate of China for、uh, to our foreign cultures. We are eager to learn from the merits of other countries and other nations and other people. We welcome、uh, other cultural、um, elements to come to China,、uh, to because we think this is the way for Chinese culture to enrich itself and get better development. For example,、uh, not long ago,、uh, China has. Uh, made a Chinese version of、um, uh, the、uh, Broadway musical *Mamma Mia*, and this Chinese version Broadway musical has achieved great success in China. It has been performed for over、uh, several dozens of uh, uh, performances. We young people see *Mamma Mia* the reaction and American young people see *Mamma Mia* the reaction is the same. Oh, oh, that's it. Actually, the Chinese young people receive the Mama, Chinese version *Mamma Mia* just as the、uh, people in the, in the United States they would、um, shout and dance to the music. Thank you. Thank you. We have time. Yes. Ya Feng Xiao Western Center uh, panel. Uh, I have a question about the uh, China uh, threat, uh, which you said China threat is a fantasy, and I know that、uh, you are not only the minister of、uh, culture but also an international uh, uh, expert uh, as a as a guest professor at the、uh, People's University. So I would like to know your view because here、uh, in America, I、uh, mean, as we know that uh, uh, the University of、uh, Chicago professor James.、Uh, Mentioned now that he said that it's inevitable, not because American、uh, China's development, not China's development at this rate, not for the next twenty years, not we're inevitable that you, because United States、uh, is a nasty.
power. United States is the only net, uh, hegemon. Now, United States will not allow China even become a hegemon in Asia. So this conflict is inevitable. Now, I would like to listen to your views. Thank you. Uh, 我是来自威尔逊中心的那么我想您刚刚谈到过中国威胁论是一个可以说是一个错误的理论您不但是一位文化部长您也是一位国际问题的专家我知道您在人民大学也是客座教授那不久前呢就是芝加哥大学有一位
增长速度，大概在历史上没有过的，哎，中国的历史上没有过，世界的历史上也没有过。Maybe my points just now couldn't convince you totally because you would say、uh, those were stories about ancient Chinese, but we are not living in the age of modern Chinese.、Uh, in that case, I would like to、uh, speak from another perspective. Over the last three decades, China has achieved const、uh, continuous economic growth for over about 30 years.、Uh, this is an、um, unprecedented、uh, phenomenon in the hu entire human history for a country of、uh, more than one billion people to achieve constant. Uh, economic growth of annual rate about 10 percent for around 30 years. 那么我们之所以能够取得这样的高速的发展，除了我们中国人自己勤劳、智慧、艰苦奋斗之外，非常重要的一个条件是，过去的这三十年，是世界上是一个总体上和平稳定的一个世界，是和平发展成为世界发展的潮流，给我们提供了这样一个难得的历史机遇。When we look at China's progress in these years,、uh, we could, of course, attribute such progress to Chinese people's intelligence, our hardworking, and uh, uh, everything from inside. But we also need to contribute,、uh, attribute this to a really peaceful and stable environment for China to develop. We have sincerely experienced that in a country's development, only in a stable and peaceful environment can it be achieved. Chinese people are not stupid. 有这样的和平环境，才能保证我们的发展。我们当然要致力于创造一个更加和平稳定的世界，而不是一个动乱的一个战争的世界。这就是我们为什么我们不会去追去搞霸权主义，不会去呃去搞什么呃冷战，不会去搞什么争夺霸权这样的理由，就是这样。是，也是，这完全符合我们自己的利益。From this perspective, we can see that the Chinese people have fully realized what we can do in a peaceful and stable environment.、Uh, without such a peaceful and stable environment, we couldn't achieve what we have achieved. So the Chinese people are not、um, uh, slow in mind. So when we see what is right,、uh, and when we see that what we need for、uh, the future is peace and、uh, stability. Why should we choose the other way around? Why should we still resort to、uh, hegemony, cold war, or uh, war, um, or any harmful events that could actually impair China's development? So, actually, the Chinese people have every reason to choose peaceful development because this is the only way that has been proven successful. Another reason is that today, as the globalization of the world has developed, the information and the development of the world has developed. 从来没有像今天这样，你中有我，我中有你，这如此紧密的联系，任何一个国家都不可能独善其身。要解决人类面临的这些挑战，必须是世界各国的人民精诚合作、同舟共济才能解决。所以，这也决定了我们必须，我们应该，而且必须同世界各国人民一个和平友好相处，呃，相互帮助，呃，互相。呃，这个合作啊、呃，才能实现我们各自呃所追求的发展的目标。哎、呃，这也是为什么未来我们不会成为一个霸权国家去和什么国家争夺霸权，不会出现这样的情况。And at the same time, we all understand that China is now living in a globalized area, a new information area.、Uh, in this time, actually, every country in the world is interconnected. Our future, our destiny are bound together. No country can live alone or depend only on itself for future development. Therefore, it is very imperative for us、uh, to cooperate with all people of the world to maintain friendship with each other, to help each other, to cooperate with each other, because our future is a common future. Our destiny is bound together, and there is no other way around. Thank you. We've run out of time, I'm afraid. Could you join me in thanking Minister Tsai for his comprehensive remarks?